Greetings, Musto006, you're back again to continue on with Mega Man 8. A choice from a brand new set of four Roadmasters, but in this video, the star of the show is going to be... Not exactly one of my favourite levels this, but on the bright side, there's no mid-boss. And we start outside in a sunflower clock area, with lots of grasshoppers, enemies that launch out of pits, claw traps, and reappearing disappearing platforms, albeit of a slightly different style in this level. And it's the sheer number of enemies as well as their placement that makes this first area a really difficult introduction to the stage. Now as you perhaps noticed, platforms actually work like holograms, so they stay on screen for about 3 seconds, and then all of them disappear. And if you plan to take the high route, make sure you set off immediately off the platform to appear, or you won't have enough time to reach your arrived destination. Seriously, look at this, even the usually non-threatening flying robots now seem to shoot at you at the worst possible time. Grrr, didn't quite make it through unscathed. But make it to the skull symbol, and you get thrown into the first of two maze sections. Now, if you know where you're going, these sections are not so bad. If, however, you're playing this for the first time, or like in my case here, it had been a while since I played the game, you're going to get lost and spend ages mucking around trying to reach the exit. The idea is that the screens continually loop round, and you need to hit a bunch of switches to move barriers out of the way so that you can reach the goal. That switch I just hit opened up the skull symbol on the floor, so I absolutely had to make my way to that switch before even trying to exit this area. Big problem, however, more so with this first maze rather than the second, funnily enough though, and we'll see why later, is that it's very easy to become disorientated. In some ways, it's almost worse this is not my first time playing the game, because I vaguely know where I'm trying to go, but I just can't seem to quite get my bearings, and it's frustrating as all hell. Stupidly dropping onto enemies will add to that frustration as well. Now, don't worry, you only, you've only got another 20 seconds or so watching me bungle around here, so it'll all be over soon. I can actually beat this first maze in around 30 seconds if I go the right way. Unfortunately, this time it took me around a minute and a half, three times as long. And no, I wasn't trying to collect the fault, by the way. I just knew one was in the vicinity of the exit. Finally! And we then immediately get thrown into an auto-scrolling screen. This tower is crumbling, and you need to get to the top post-haste. You also need to not jump into enemies, or take so long about things that other enemies have a chance to shoot at you in a confined space. Did I mention I don't like this level? So now we've got platforms jutting out of the walls to add to our sense of urgency. If you take too long, the platforms will retract into the walls, and you'll lose your opportunity to ascend. Now admittedly the auto scrolling isn't that fast, you usually have plenty of time to outrun the danger, and you can even take a few detours to collect items if you choose. I certainly however was not going to collect that health there, way too risky. Because the screen is scrolling upwards, as you can see, sometimes certain enemies can just appear from virtually nowhere, so do keep on guard at all times. And as I was saying, I have plenty of time to take a quick detour there to collect that bolt. And with that, we are out of here. That, however, was only the halfway point of the stage. Yes, seriously. The second half kicks off with another sunflower clock area, and a much more irritating one. This time, you have to be even more prepared to set off quickly, as the pits are considerably wider here, and unlike in the first version, you won't be able to save yourself if your timing's off. I took a hit at the beginning because I didn't take out the enemy quickly enough, and thought tanking the hit would be preferable to falling in the pit. Of course, with wider and more frequent pits, that means more of the pit launching enemies that always seem to be in the way. And check out this really narrow platform with a claw trap on it. And you can, if you keep jumping over it, wait out the platforms. But for some reason here, I charged my arm making to the next ledge and somehow, despite taking another hit, made it. Wow, that was lucky. That, by the way, is a very easy bolt to collect with no real danger at all, so yeah, why the hell not? And that brings us to the end of that section. And make it to the skull, and it's time for the second maze. Although I say maze, this one is much more like a corridor that you have to go down. The open areas seem to be few and far between, and you don't really get much of a choice which direction to take. The goal, of course, appears tantalisingly at the beginning of the area with a barrier in front of it, so we're basically going to have to travel a really long way to hit one switch, and then backtrack all the way to the beginning. That doesn't, of course, mean that I won't get lost again. 
It's around here that I take the wrong path, so guess what? I'm going to have to redo a whole chunk of the section. I still stand by my stance that it's more difficult to get lost in this second maze, but clearly it can still happen. In case any of you are wondering though, at their shortest, I reckon you can probably beat the first maze in half the time it takes to beat the second maze, so the second one is definitely longer. And right, finally hit the switch I need. Now to backtrack. And having reached the switch, the path to take is pretty straightforward. In fact, if you didn't open it before, this party ball here can serve as a useful reference point. Almost out, but you'll probably find that you have to wait a little here for the Mets to get out of your way. Unless, of course, you just want to take the hit. That, however, goes against every fibre of my being, so, nah, I'll wait them out. And with that, the level's over, thank God. In case any of you are wondering, no, there's nothing off to the left. And yes, I'm using charged Mega Buster shots for this fight. already got hit, so no chance for a perfect run, and I'd much rather just speed up this fight, since he spends so much of it on a range. He's not that difficult, apart from trying to dodge one move in a particular scenario, but unfortunately this fight can just take ages. His Astro Balls can also do a damn fine job of blocking your attacks, further threatening up the fight. As for his attacks, Astro can do one of two things. He can dive bomb towards you, Although it has to be said, he can't seem to move very far to the left or the right when doing this, so this ultimately isn't very threatening at all. He can click on the screen and send a raid of meteors down on you, and that's pretty easy to dodge as long as you pay attention to the last place he appears on screen. The meteors never rain down on that spot, so make your way to that position and you'll be fine every time. Finally, he can dive to the middle of the screen, vertical wise send his Astro Orbs out to circle the screen, and fire Star Projectiles at you. Not so bad if you're on the right hand side of the screen, an enormous pain if you're on the left. On the right hand side of the screen, Star Projectiles come at you when there's a ton of room to jump over them, and not clear of an Astro Orb. On the left hand side, not so much. I never actually position myself on the left hand side of the screen during that attack, so unfortunately you won't get an actual demonstration but just try to watch the timing or position of the Astro Orbs and Star Projectiles at the bottom left of the screen, compared to the bottom right. Or not, if he keeps doing that attack. Finally, the stage is over! Good grief is right. I get. A rain of pink meteors appear on screen and pretty much obliterate everything on it. Phenomenally powerful weapon. First of a new set of four rubber masters, so a perfect run was almost always likely. But that's not to say it was easy though. And I bet you can guess what Astro did time after time. stuck around for the perfect run, did you? Good for you. And the good news, or is that bad news, is that you won't have too long to wait between moments when I chime in to tell you about an area of the screen that caused me problems. Every single one of the five sections the level is split into tripped me up. Starting with three or so mess ups on the first section, all caused by being too slow to take out an enemy hanging around the last leg of a reappearing disappearing platform section. I had a rather fortunate dodge there, in case you missed it. A 
couple of failures on the first maze. Really clumsy ones where I just wasn't properly paying attention to what was happening on the screen. No excuses, to be honest. And as I was saying previously, when you know where you're going, and believe me, by the time I got the successful perfect run, I knew exactly where I was going, this screen can be cleared in around 30 seconds or so. And around five or so outtakes on the third section, the tower climb. Mainly jumping into enemies that hadn't properly spawned onto the screen at the time. Always a fun way to mess up. Yeah, as much as you want to be well away from the bottom of the screen, don't get too far ahead of yourself. And that's the halfway point already. Just goes to show how quick the level goes by when you've got it more or less memorised. So this is the fourth section, the second platform gauntlet area, and I hate it. Double digit outtakes here, easily. There are just so many enemies that are plumb in the way. So many narrow ledges you have to muck around on until the platforms reappear. So much what seems like perfect time requires for the platform to disappear and drop you in a pit. Yeah, I might have made that look easy. Trust me, it isn't. Fifth and final section, the second maze. And you'll notice me take my time here. Do not try to get past when the eye has disappeared. It will immediately clamp you. I speak from painful experience. Unfortunately, as for the area as a whole, again, a couple of mess-ups to really clumsy things that really frustrated me. But after you pass the second outdoor area, you're easily past the worst. And would you believe it, I still managed to get myself lost and go the wrong way in my perfect one. Terrific. And my sincere apologies. This is going to be a long one, what can I say? If Astro decides to spend the majority of the fight messing around at the top of the screen, spamming his Astro Crush attack, there's nothing I can do about it. Thankfully, for what can be a long fight, it's usually a pretty easy one. Except for that one instance I've already talked about. Guess what Astro did to me? Three times! Hopefully you'll notice that for most of the fight, on autopilot, I aim for the right-hand side of the screen. The Astro Orb Star Projectile attack is easy to avoid over there. It just isn't on the left-hand side. So, Musto, why not just always be on the right-hand side of the screen? Well, sometimes you'll dive bomb so he ends up on the very right-hand edge of the screen, meaning that if he then does the Orb or Star attack, I can't jump to avoid projectiles as I'll jump into him, so I have to move to the left. Alternatively, and what is far more likely to happen, 
Kuzaki will choose to teleport himself to the far right of the screen as the last place he appears before performing Astro Crush. And subsequently, that's where he'll reappear when the meteors have all fallen. Since the second scenario I've described is completely luck based, if he does this during the fight, I'm in trouble. All I can do is hope that if he does end up on the very right hand of the screen, that he next doesn't do the orb star attack. As long as I can get myself back to the right of the screen, I'll be fine. Of course, coming off the back of that level though, if he does screw me over, you can bet that I'm not going to be too thrilled. Regardless, that's all I have to say, so enjoy the remainder of the fight. Oh, I hate this level, at least when attempting a perfect run. So long, and tedious, and annoying. I'd actually thought this was going to be the easiest of the last four Robot Masters. Now, whether or not it turned out that way is a story for a separate three days, but at the time, believing the others would be more difficult filled me with no small amount of dread. It took two hours and ten minutes to finally put this stage behind me. While screwing up a total of 28 times, three of those on the Robot Master. Despite my very clumsy Let's Play attempt, the level isn't that difficult other than the first screen of the second half. It is though surprisingly easy to make a mess of the climbing section at the end of the first half of the level and the second maze, and a large number of outtakes were due to clumsiness on these sections. But that second outdoor screen, man is it a pain to get across the pits with the reappearing disappearing platforms and avoid the frog and bug enemies which almost always seem to be in your way. Yeah, a double digit number of mess ups there, and I hate that screen. Now what the level may lack in serious difficulty, other than that one screen, it more than makes up for in length, and the two May sections in particular are the most boring things ever to redo in quick succession repeatedly. By the time I completed this stage, I practically could have got through the mazes blindfolded. Now I will admit that you need to watch out a little for the enemy placement in the second maze. They caught me out more than I would have liked, but ugh, this has to be one of the most boring levels to have to replay. As for Astro, he's mostly fine. I don't really have a problem dodging his attacks, apart from one notable exception. When he spins his Astro balls in a circle and he's positioned on the right hand side of the screen. This forces you to be over to the left hand side, and over there the time to avoid the circling balls and the shots he fires at you is just messed up. It's no problem on the right hand side, the timing gives you a natural gap to avoid both. This gap is nowhere near as lean on the left hand side and I have huge trouble finding it. I wouldn't say this combination, so this attack when Astro is on the right hand side of the screen guarantees I'll fail, but all three of my Astro outtakes occurred this way. Make of that what you will. To be honest, it was a sense of tedium in having to redo those May sections over and over and over and over again they got me more pissed off with every failure, at least on the second half of the level. 
three Roadmaster outtakes, meaning I have to redo the entire level again, certainly didn't help my mood any either. Astro earns a 7 out of 10 from me. This took a really long time to complete, and the only reason the number of outtakes might seem slightly low is due to the length of a level. If, for example, it had taken me over two hours to perfect run Guts' stage, I would have screwed up well over 60 times, if not more. The level is just tedious. Once you replay the May sections enough, you'll eventually memorise the correct route. And the Roadmaster is extremely annoying if he does one particular attack on the right-hand side of the screen, and I'm not sure there's anything you can do to stop him from doing it if he so chooses. I don't feel that we're into wood territory. To date, the only stage I've raised is 8 out of 10, because Astro himself is much, much easier. And as I've continually said, I think stages with tougher robot masters deserve higher ratings than stages with tougher levels. Provided, of course, the level doesn't outweigh the robot master to a ridiculous extent. And Astro certainly doesn't, no matter how slow and tedious it might be. So at least that's one more out of the way. Will the next robot master turn out to be as much of a chore? Search me. Shoot in next time to find out. Cheerio.